Hi everybody, I'm Ron Valencia and thank you for joining my channel. Today we're going to take a tour of the Roland Piano app. So if you've never seen it before, never used it before, this will hopefully give you some insight so you can find out whether or not you like this app or not. Well, the first thing about it is it's free and it works with Apple and Android devices. It works with many different Roland pianos, digital stage pianos, and digital grand pianos. Today, I have it set up with my GP6, which is a brand new digital grand piano that just came out in 2023. Let's dive in. So the first thing you notice that it says is that it's a dashboard and the dashboard just has a little funky picture of me and it says that it's connected to the instrument. This is important. If you turn on the instrument first and then you open the app, it'll search for that instrument and connect it. Now, the important thing to note is that you have to pair it the first time that you use it. So make sure you do pair it properly and the instructions are in the instruction manuals. If you need further details about that, let me know and I'll do a small little tutorial to get you started on that. All right, let's move on. We're gonna jump into piano settings. There are two main functions of the piano settings and one is the settings themselves and two are the tones that you can use within the instrument. So the settings are very simple. It's your volume, it's your key touch, it is your master tuning. Um, you can transpose a lot of things. A lot of people ask me, what is ambience really? So the best way I'm gonna describe this to you is it's really like a reverb effect. It kind of gives you the feeling or the, the sound of playing in a larger room than where you might be. Like for example, I'm playing in a very carpeted living space with this piano. But if I put on the ambience, and I'm gonna go ahead and change it and show you what different types we have here. There's studio, lounge, concert hall, and cathedral as far as ambient types. So your cathedral is obviously going to be a bigger, wide open space, and your studio is going to be the opposite, is going to be a very closed space. So you're gonna have a shorter reverb sound. This is important because you may not like the sound that comes out. For example, let's go into cathedral, and let's turn the ambient depth, which really means the amount of reverb, let's turn it way high, just so you can hear how the piano is affected by it. So this is with the cathedral effect on there. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the effect all the way down so it's off. You hear how it just really cut off all the reverb? And if we go into all of those settings, if we go into lounge or concert hall, that will also change the style of the reverb. So let's add, um, let's try concert hall and let me turn it right back up a little bit. That sounds pretty authentic, pr sounds pretty nice. So anyway, you have that complete control of that, and you can also put that in your headphones so you can hear it, it says it down here, 3D ambience. I guess that's to give you a little bit more sound quality in your headphones. I don't know, sounds good to me. Anyway, so check it out when you, when you uh, set this up. All right, let's dig into the tones. Now on this particular piano, we have a couple of different features that are really, really super cool. And many of your digital grand pianos are going to have this uh, same feature. And that is where you have single, split, dual, and twin. Let's go over those really briefly. Single just means that you're using a single sound over the entire instrument. So right now I have the, uh, the concert grand piano all over the entire instrument from the top to the low, okay? So that's all that is, it's very simple. I'm gonna skip split and go to dual. Dual is two sounds, one on top of the other. And that's when you have, if you notice here, I have in tone one, I have the concert piano, and in tone two, I have a string sound. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure you could hear both the piano and the string. Now the little balance control is exactly what you think it is. It means one's going to be more loud than the other. So if I turn it all the way to one side, you're gonna have all the strings. If I put it all the way back down, you're gonna have all piano with just a little bit of string. And then obviously somewhere in the middle for both. But let's say you didn't wanna use the piano sound. So you could go ahead and select that piano sound and you can, let's say, Let's see what else. Oh, a voice sound. How about a jazz scat? Let's go for it. Set that tone. 
And now we have a chess scat and strings. This is gonna sound weird. It's actually kind of cool. Anyway, so the dual allows you to layer, is, is layering is how I would have phrased it anyway. This one. All right, now let's go back to split. Split is pretty cool. You could do a lot of fancy things with it. Let's go back. Uh, actually, I'll leave the tones where they are. We have a jazz scat and we have a bass with cymbal. So the bass with cymbal is to emulate, let's say, a jazz kind of band or something like that. So you get this kind of like. So you got that little bass thing happening with the little cymbal, but then you have the jazz scat. So what you have is you've got the piano split into two. So it's, it's almost like having two different keyboards. You have one over here and one over here. So that's one of the cool little things about having this split. So we've got two, and you can play them at the same time, obviously. So it's kind of cool. You could do some really, really fun stuff with that. You can also adjust things a little bit. Let me show you how. First of all, you might want to change that split point. Let's say one of the easiest split points to you is kind of just remembering where middle C is. So let's use middle C as our split point. Well, I hit the split point button and then I touched middle C. It automatically recorded it there. And then I'm gonna select set key as split point. Boom, done. So now I've got everything. So everything above middle C is going to be and then everything below middle C, okay, is going to be the other sound. That's how fun and how easy it can be. There's another feature that you can do. So if you take a look down at the very bottom of this page, right around here it says right shift and left shift. So if we go over to the right shift, we can actually change the octave. So instead of everything being like a higher pitch, what if I wanted to play in that exact range, but I wanted to play it down an octave? I'm gonna hit the negative button and it goes to negative one. That does not mean one step, it means one octave. That's important for you to know. All right. Okay, so now we have that sound already down an octave and it sounds natural and I've got a lot of room I can play with. I can still go up higher, I can still go down a little way. So if we look at our left hand, we could do the same thing. If it says left shift, we can shift this down an octave or up an octave. Okay, so we can be able to get the exact range of sounds that we want. So that's how cool and how easy that is. All right, so we've gone over the single, the dual, which I call layering, and then we've gone over the split. Now let's talk about the, the twin. The twin is what I would call the teaching kind of setting, okay? This is where you're taking your instrument and you're splitting it into, you're using the same sound over the whole instrument, and it's already setting the octaves for you in order to teach. It's playing as if it's middle C right here, okay? Oh wait, it's middle C down here. So we've got middle C here and here. So your teacher can be at one end and your student can be at the other or vice versa, it doesn't matter. The cool thing is that they allow you, um, the, the way Roland does their speakers is that if you're whoever's sitting at this end will hear mostly the speaker that's closest to them and vice versa. It's a really cool teaching tool to use. So if you're if you're doing a lesson, that is probably the best setting for you. Now let's go back into single. We're gonna make sure that we're on a piano sound and we are. So we're gonna get rolling and move on and no, there was no pun intended. We're okay, so we're now we're going to take a look at the metronome. The metronome feature is very simple. So the first feature is obviously the big digital numbers right there. It tells you the the how many beats per minute your your metronome set for. Okay, so if you want to use the language that is often uh, written on sheet music, like for example, as Allegro or something like that, there it is. All right, so we're going to try that again. So it, it started at about 130. If I wanted to speed it up, I would do something like Presto. Presto is very fast, 184. Okay, so that will automatically set it to like an average speed that terminology is meant for. You can also just do it by numbers. You can enter it in. Like a lot of dance numbers are around 120. So I'm gonna do one, two, zero, set tempo, boom, start. 
Okay, so there you go. If you're wondering what the little traditional thing is, this is just how it used to look in the day, like an old time metronome used to look. Um, you could drag it down to make it faster. You can move it up to make it a little bit slower. It's kind of cool to just look at it in that way, but it's honestly, it's the same feature. All right, so let's get out of the metronome. Let's move on. Now we've got, we're getting down to the library. The library is a very significant part of this app. There are so many different features. I'm going to try to get you through most of what's important and then you're going to have to dig in and just learn because there's so much in, in, in this app. So let's go into the library. I'm going to go into one of the songs that I have set up for this tutorial. And that is a beautiful song here. But if you notice, take a look down at the bottom of the screen here. We've got a bunch of orange circles, okay? And those are highlighted circles. And let's talk through each one of those real quick. We have over here on the left side, we have our play button. And then we have this one that's not lit. That's our reverse button. And then here is a mute button and then our volume slider. So if we wanna maybe move the volume up a little bit, I can move the volume up to about halfway. Then we have a metronome in case you want to practice a little bit before you get started and so forth. And then to be honest with you, I don't know what this particular button does. It doesn't seem to change anything. I could turn it on and off and nothing seems to change. If you can figure it out and let me know what that button does, it'd be great. Wait, anyway, the next button over just goes back to the piano settings in case you want to change the tone or this, the sound of the instrument that you're playing. Like you don't want it to be a piano. You want it to be something else. So you can just select, whoops, you can select that little keyboard right here where my cursor is, and then you can do that. Now, this little button right here that I'm highlighting is for the accompaniment. So when you when I play this track for you in a few seconds, you're gonna hear all these strings and this you know glorious sounds, all these different sounds. That particular button is going to be for the accompaniment. And if you don't wanna hear that because it's not just the piano sounds, you can just turn it off. You can just click on it and it's gone. And then you won't hear those accompaniment sounds. All right, now the two hands, I bet you could figure out it's really, really simple. The left hand is your left hand piano and your right hand is your right hand piano. That's it. Okay, so anyway, so in piano world, the right hand means your treble clef, which is your high notes over here, okay? Most of the time, like there are exceptions. We're not gonna get deep into that. But so you have your left hand, you got your right hand. And if you don't want to, let's say you don't want the, right hand the melody to play and because you want to play it well you all you have to do is select the right hand turn it off and then when you play back the track you will not hear the right hand piano play now because i have the accompaniment on you're still going to hear the melody because you're going to hear it being played um while while the track is going so let me play it so you can get an understanding of it there's a little click to get us started and then piano Now, I'm going to turn the right hand back on. And now I've turned the accompaniment off. And you hear the melody. So now this next time through, I'm going to turn the melody off halfway through so you can hear the difference. So at that point, it becomes up to you to be able to play along with it. That's why this is such a great learning and teaching tool. So I think it's really kind of cool that I got somebody playing the left hand part because I'm, maybe I'm struggling with the left hand part or maybe I'm struggling with the melody and I just want to play the left hand part. So there's a lot that you can do to learn from it and still have a ton of fun with this instrument. Okay, there's also a record feature. So let's go back to the beginning of the song. Um, we're now back at the beginning of the song. We're going to leave the hands on there, but there's a record feature. And the cool thing about the record feature is that if you want to play along with the track, it will record your performance. That's how easy it is. Let's go back out to the library. We're back out at the library, but let's say we want to learn scales and stuff like that. Like your teacher came in and said, ah, you need to learn some C major scales. Well, click on scales, click on C major and hit play. All right, the same um, 
buttons down at the very bottom apply the same different effects. So you can turn off your right and your left hand, and you can turn off the accompaniment if you don't want to hear that and you just want to hear, like, let's say the metronome or the click track. All right. So that's our scales. We've got hand and exercises already built in to your app. So you can play all these hand and exercises. I'll get so I turned on digging it. Okay. So I basically turned off the accompaniment so you could hear the actual piano part that you would have to learn. Now that's awfully fast, but again, you can go in and you can slow things down a little bit so you can find your tempo to work with until you have mastered it and then you can move it a little bit faster. So the rest about the library is common sense. Um, you've got these categories, you've got different difficulties, it's separated by artists as well. So you've got different ways of looking up specific songs, specific artists, and so forth. I will say this, the Rolling Cloud, they update that fairly regularly. So you're going to get new songs. So if you belong to the Rolling Cloud, it's kind of cool. I think it's like three bucks a month or 30 bucks a year to belong to the Rolling Cloud and they will just keep adding songs. And I think your library is just expansive. It is just a ton of music there. And it's got the sheet music ready for you. It's got the accompaniment ready for you. They do all of the hard work so you can just have fun and enjoy your instrument. All right, that's the main things about the library, which is really, really super cool. Now we're gonna talk about the recorder and this one is really, really deep. Okay, that was sarcasm. There's one button. You hit the button and you start playing. It records your performance. I'll demonstrate. And you can visualize it. <laughs> all right, so all you have to do is go in and if you liked that piece, you would hit save. And once you've saved it, you can go ahead and just call it back at any time and then play it over and over again. And then the accompaniment feature is very much like you would find on any kind of home style keyboard is where it's got all this accompaniment built in to what you play. So for example, if you are playing a specific chord progression, you can play the accompaniment along, the accompaniment will play along with your chord progression. Let's get this started. Anyway, the idea is just to fill out the sound. So if you're playing by yourself, you got all these strings, you got all these instruments, it can be super cool to hear all these things playing while you're just playing, especially if you're entertaining um, guests and so forth and you wanna show off a little bit. It kind of gives like a little bit of a feeling of a, a larger ensemble rather than just you playing by yourself. All right, but let's just say you wanted to play just the drummer, uh, just the drums only, you can do that. You can just click that little tab over there and then you can play just the drums. The advanced settings are very kind of simple. Um, this is where you can get into sync, like sync start is you pressing the key and it's starting at the same time. Um, auto fill in, it'll start to do fills where it feels they, like they should come at the end of phrases. It'll automatically do these little fills. So there's a lot of deeper, um, a lot of deeper things that you can get involved in with when it comes to accompaniment. So if you're into that, experiment and have some fun with it. Okay, and then of course our piano settings. So if you wanna change the piano tone and you wanna change it to something else, maybe jazz scat. So the last two things on the dashboard are very simple. As you can see, it's just the manual and the settings. The settings are very simple. It's an introduction to the app. You can go into it and read how Roland describes the app. I think we went into a little bit more detail here than what Roland does initially on their website. But you can also, if you're struggling, let's say you're struggling to pair it, you can go into Bluetooth help and you can figure out some more ways to try to troubleshoot things if things aren't hooking up the way you expect them to. And the rest is kind of common sense and simple. You might be saying, Why, what are these little three buttons over here for? And basically they're the same thing as the, what you see in the menu now. All they've done is just made it a little bit more organized so you can see all of them at once. So you can see, get to any one at a glance. So that's the basic idea behind the that little uh, menu button. 
So thank you for joining me. If you like this, please subscribe. Please give me a like and a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or if there's something that you're saying that maybe I was a little bit confusing on, please, 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 please call me out. Ask me, what's going on? What did you mean by such and such? Also, I think it's important for me to note that I do not work for Roland. I do not work for a music store. Oh. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks again. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.